marriage, when we start talking about this, we started with number one. We talked about a negative mindset. And then we talked about the pressures of life. Yeah. We talked about last week, attention deficit disorder, how so many times you got so many things going on in your mind. Your mind mind is just somewhere else. Yeah, you're not there. And then we talked about time and energy, how you got to create some time within your schedule. We talked about things that can rob you of your time, like work and different things like that. And then last week we talked about a healthy self-image. Loving yourself. Loving who you are. How you see yourself. Whatever, Whatever stage in life you're in right now, loving yourself. Yeah, so the things that we talk about how to overcome these barriers is that, well, a negative mindset, number one, we said you have to change your view about yeah. uh, uh, sex life. It is yes. important. You can't have a negative mindset that this is not important. It's not important to me. You got to change your mindset. So yes. it has to be a positive view on how you see your marriage. The pressures of life. We said that those we things are important. We all have yes. Everybody has it. You got to worry about saying, man, don't work, man, don't eat. So work is important. We have children. We have responsibilities, but you have to understand that intimacy with your spouse is important. And you have to balance. You have to balance. You have to balance. You, to you balance. can't be all the way over here. My pastor always says, he says, you can't put the a carriage before the horse. So you can't have the tail wagging the dog. Exactly. So if that's going on in your life, you need to make sure you're restructuring with some things. All Attention right. deficit disorder, we talked about how you have to decompress. You got to decompress. Sex is not just physical, it's mental as well. And if you're not there mentally, it's going to show up in your sex life, yeah. in your intimacy with your spouse. So give yourself times. And I talked about how you have to learn the difference between sexual touching and non-sexual touching. Sometimes your wife in order to help her decompress. And the reason we focused on this with attention deficit at all is because we found out when we were doing our research that sex is 60% mental mm-hmm. when it comes to women. So you have to give them time to decompress. So you have to learn the difference between, I don't want to touch you sexually this time, I just want to get you to relax and calm down and get yourself mm-hmm. together. And then time and energy, my wife talked about last week, sometimes you have to buy yourself. You might have to buy time. yourself some time and buy yourself what you need so you can be available to your spouse. Yep. I mean, you might need some help and assistance in the home. Kids might need to pick up responsibilities. Children might need to go to bed at a decent time. And so sometimes you gotta buy yourself some time. You gotta buy yourself some time, it's so important. And I know a lot of times, man, you don't wanna clamp down on that money and try to make sure things are running right in the home. But I had a mindset like that as well. And when we actually did some research, we found out that some of the stuff that my wife desired was not as expensive at all. Sometimes it's some of the things that I needed for some time was not expensive at all. So a healthy self-image. Hey, if, you, if you're curious, go back to the teaching that we did on finances. Yes, it's on yes, YouTube. Yes, it's, it's there. YouTube, yeah. If you need some tips in that area. And so healthy self-image, we said we got to love yourself right now. Yeah. And this is one of the things that we battle with. A lot of times people feel like they're not sexy anymore. And, and when I get to this particular weight or when I get to this particular size, I'll feel more sexy, you know. You got to love yourself right now. Don't make your spouse wait. You know, enjoy doing yourself right you now. You know what? Research actually shows that sex is good exercise. Yeah. It's good. So if you're trying to work on that goal, hey. Yeah. You work both ends of it. So we're closing out this teaching. That's yes. what we went a lot of time over. Uh, with this particular topic because, I mean, what we're reviewing at the beginning is because we're closing it out today and the last barrier that we're going to talk about is addictions. Addictions. Addictions that's robbing your sex life. And what's so interesting is some of these addictions you think might be helping your sex life, Mm -hmm. but it's actually robbing it. Honey, go ahead. Number one, work. Work can be an addiction. We got some workaholics out there. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. have work. Is work important? Yes. It's important. Is work necessary? Yes. Should you work as unto the Lord? Yes. But some of you have taken things and you're out of balance. Yeah. You're no longer working as unto the Lord. Work has become your Lord. Ooh. You're not. Hey, now. Go ahead, girl. I like that. You're not just working to provide for your family, but it has become your, your everything. Yeah. And you're out of balance. Yeah. And so make sure that work is in its proper place. I read a post one time on Facebook. It was a little boy who asked his dad. He said, well, how much do you get paid an hour? And the dad shushed him off and pushed him away. And then he kept asking him every day, how much do you get paid an hour? I think the dad said $20 an hour. And he went in his piggy bank and he got $20. He said, dad, can I have one hour of your time? 
And then you don't I want your that. life to be that way. No, that's You sad. don't want your life to be that way, guys. Work can be an addiction. It can be an addiction. Number two, hobbies. Can I say that too? Can I kind of, kind of pick sure. back off of the word real quick? And work, and maybe you're going to get into this in hobbies and, and so forth, but not just working your careers, but some of us are, are working on things out of a passion to us. It can be in the ministry and so forth. We love what we do. You're right. We have couples that we work with. We love what we do. We love it. But we have to keep it in balance. Yeah. We have to keep it in balance to make sure that it doesn't get out of balance and it doesn't rob other areas of our Honey, life. that is so important because when my, when my wife, when we first started pastoring, the church, I was super pastor. I could be sitting down eating dinner with my family. We could be out having a good time. If my phone rung and somebody called me from the church, I ended everything that I was doing with my family and yeah. I ran to the rescue of those people, neglecting my family. He's going to save another family yeah. and another marriage, but what about us? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that you don't make yourself available, but there is a balance in everything mm -hmm. that you do, and everything is in an emergency. Right. Everything is not an emergency. Or you need to come up with a system and build yourself a team so that there are others available that can help, that can help with you. that load and help with that responsibility. And Apostle Nicole, my pastor, my wife, my, 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 um, also our pastor, she said something that was so powerful. She said, everything is not an emergency. It's not. Everything it's is not, not. an emergency. It really isn't. You know, so some stuff people need to figure out on their you own. Need to get they them need to work through yes. on their own. So you have to make sure that you balance that yes. as well. And then we talked about hobbies. Everybody want to go play basketball. You want to play. Uh, my wife, she loves to work in the yard. But I mean by that, she loves to dig and work with flowers. He's put me on a flower like band. Y'all pray I for the to. bishop. I, I just don't feel that he heard from the Lord on that. <laughs> but can y'all believe me? He told me I can buy no more flowers. That was please. it. That was dope. Send up a prayer now for the bishop. <laughs> but a hobby can be a barrier when you're spending more time in your hobby than you are with your spouse. And that's another thing we're going to talk about in the next segment. We're going to talk about escapism. A lot of times you're escaping yeah. instead of dealing with something that oh, you Oh, that is a with. good one. That is a good one. A lot of times it's not that you like it so much, you love it so much. It's not that it's so much it's your passion. You're using that as an excuse not to deal with problems and issues in your life with your spouse, with your children. You're just using it to get away. And you know what? When you get back, you're going to have the same situation. And just like a weed, it's going to be bigger and it's going to be harder Staring to get Staring right in, in your, your face. Because you hadn't dealt with it. You mm -hmm. hadn't dealt with it. Last one. We're going to close out this segment of it in is social media. All right. This has been something in relationships. I'm telling you, it's destroying relationships. Okay. They are doing, they're going out to eat on their phone. They are doing so much. You're supposed to be spending time with your children. My son, the other day I was watching TV and he wanted me to watch a movie with him. And I was trying to watch a movie with him. And he said, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. He said, can you put your phone down? I'm trying to tell you something. And I realized, I said, wow. Sometimes it's stuff. like, a, it's, it could be a bad habit. Let me, let me say this. Social media is not necessarily bad. We're coming to you through social media. So it's good things, but things can get out of balance. If you can't put that phone down and spend quality time with your spouse, if you can't sit and talk with your spouse without flipping through a phone and you're doing something, something's not right with that. Mm -hmm. Something It should not occupy all your time. It should not be glued to your side like your clothing. Right. You should be able to put that down and walk away from it and spend time with your family. Sometimes just go to a restaurant. Not just with kids, but look at couples interacting. One time we went to a restaurant. Oh my gosh, we watched this couple. Not that we were just watching, but we were waiting for our we food. We were people watching. We were we were waiting for our food. And I don't think they looked at each other. And it, they, they didn't look upset. But the whole time, one day, you know, they're just this. The whole entire They'll dinner. Eat. Yeah. And I said, oh my God. But couples are doing this not only in restaurants, but even in the bedroom. You're supposed to be spending time with your loved one, loving on them, hugging on them, kissing on them. But you can't do that. And then the conversations that you're bringing in your bedroom is not about you all, about some lie or some fictitious event that's happening on Facebook. Or some other or relationship YouTube. or somebody Gosh. else. Let them folks live their lives and yeah. you work on yours. Scripture we're going to close out is this right here. Yes. Paul says this. He said, be sober, be vigilant. Yes. 
He said, because your adversary, the devil, is like a roaring lion. And say he was a lion. He said he's like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's trying to devour your home, your finances, your marriage, your sex life. He's trying to devour you. He's not playing with you. No. He's not playing with you. He's trying to take you out. But the Bible says if you're sober, in other words, if you're balanced, we're not telling you to cut yourself up from the world, but there are times where you need to put social media up, pick it up, and then there's times when you need to put it down. Exactly. And sometimes when you're with your spouse and they enter the city home, we need to put social media down.